Good evening, and welcome to Hello It's Us, a program based on the premise that life in general goes better if it's us working together as opposed to you, me, and them working at cross purposes. Hello It's Us is brought to you by a collaboration between the Center for Disabilities and Development, the Extended Dream Foundation, and all the folks here at Public Access Television Channel 18. I'm Terry Cunningham, one of your hosts, along with Keith Ruff, Mr. Oh. Joe Cool down at the end. <laughs> and we're happy tonight to have with us from Heritage Area, Heritage Area Agency on Aging, from the Aging and Disability Resource Center, Regina Fruget. Fruget. It does yeah. just kind of roll off the tongue. It does, it does. Tarjay welcome, Fruget, welcome, you. yes. Welcome. Thank you for having me tonight. I greatly appreciate it. And I guess we, we start with what is the Aging and Disability Resource Center? Mm, that is a very good question. And if you can believe it or not, it's actually not a place. So I think people may have the impression that because it has a center attached to it, that it's a set building that you go to to get things and whatnot. It could be, but it's more of an idea of, you know how you were saying it's all working together, that we're all better that way in terms of personal development and community development. It's kind of that in the, in the idea of getting everybody to talk, getting everybody to have a single access point. Yes. It's one place that you can call to get resources, support, in-person assistance, to navigating the wonderful system that we have out there just that we have to, to work with, right? Yeah. So that is kind of uh, the little bit of what an ADRC is. Regina, yeah. the decline tell. Do we cover all ages? Yes, Keith. Well, preface that. 18 is kind okay. of our starting point. So, okay. yes, we're attached to the Area Agency on Aging. So there's a misconception out there that we are only working with those that are 60 and older. Okay. But because of the ADRC, idea that's coming or that's here yeah we are able to work with anybody who's 18 and older okay. with some form of disability and that doesn't mean that the government is telling you that you're disabled it can be your prior to claiming disability benefits okay. it may be a depression or an anxiety a learning disability um, all the way up the lifespan as long as you can prove it. No, you don't have to okay. prove it. No. Nope. What's going to happen, though, is if you're trying to access services, yeah. that might be where we're looking okay. at, is it diagnosed if yeah. it's not. But to have somebody to talk to and to start planning for things, okay. no, it doesn't have to be okay. proved. Okay. That's cool. Yep. And so the heritage is area. It's kind of, if you think of Kirkwood and the seven counties. Yes. So Benton, Len, Jones, Cedar, yeah. Johnson, Iowa, and Washington, those seven, okay. those are Heritage's ADRC responsibility. So yeah. next question would be, if you lived in Des Moines, do you have an ADRC? Yeah. As of January 1, yes, you do. So um, it... it It'll depend on how much they've developed their ADRC because they, as of January 1, were designated one. So it might be a little bit different than what we have going on in our seven counties. Because you're already... Right. We've been around for about yeah. four, four or five years okay. or so. So we've been doing or trying to do more of that single point of access okay. for the last three, four years. So one of the big things that comes with an EDRC is a program that's called Options Counseling. Okay. You guys heard of Options Counseling? Sure. A little bit. So the idea of Options Counseling is being able to sit down with someone, which more than likely would be myself or my coworker, oh. and talking about um, your preferences, your values, and your goals in living wherever you want to live. So planning 
to make home modifications um, or should I really think about assisted living? Is that really what I should be doing? Or talking about disability payments and Medicare, the whole gamut. We can come in and talk with you and have kind of an assessment and talk about the things that are important to you and some of the things that are out there that might help you be support supported in your goals. Um, okay, so. Hmm. That is options counseling, and that's in our seven counties mm -hmm. right now, currently. So, so then, yours, Des Moines, do all the area agencies on aging have the ADRC now? As, as of January one, all the triple A's, the area okay. agencies on aging, are now designated the ADRC. They may not be all one hundred percent up and functioning with like that options counseling bit yet. I can't mm -hmm. speak for them, but the the single point of access is is happening and trying to have conversations with the aging and disabled communities to work together and to kind of see how you have similar needs and similar interests and how does that kind of go together or not go together, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Different barriers, different obstacles, or are they similar? So. And that was the main reasoning that that those two particular groups were yep. picked for this. Right. And, you know, we, we work with caregivers. We work, um, so a person that doesn't necessarily have the disability or the aging, I mean, usually we, we try a way to find a way to support the person, whatever they're going through. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of calls and references from, um, like, the hospitals and social service systems to kind of help walk through the family through whatever family change they're experiencing. So the disability is pretty loose. So it's just that I think the child delivery system is a little bit different um, and there's a lot of activity and support with that right now with like family navigators and whatnot. So I think the 18 and older is kind of their focus to make sure that there's a catch for those po that population. Yeah. So. Well, and it, it's always made such sense that aging and disability work together mm -hmm. because both groups use so many of the same services yeah. right. uh, for slightly different reasons. Right, but the concept is most people want to be as independent as possible, mm -hmm. whether you're 80 or you're 20, living with some form of difference, you know. So yeah. it's just a matter of, I guess, payment stream sometimes, you know. So. Well, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's one of the problems is with payment streams. Exactly. But the, th the thing that happens as a result of this is you have two natural lobbying groups mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by working together, we can get stuff done that individually we can't. Right. And you look at the, at the two groups and the sizes mm -hmm. at which continue to grow. Right. And the the economic impact that those two groups can have right. and it forces attention. the powers that be yeah to to pay attention right. because there's a, an awful lot of influence mm -hmm. that the groups can have right. if they will play nice together which you know kind of historically has been one of the problems, and we and you know we we've been pitted against one one another mm -hmm. by the powers that be in a lot of cases, right. be, so that we very often have looked at any gain that one group gets is going to come from the other one's right. piece of the pie, right. and it doesn't have to be that way <laughs> at all. And I think what is helping, I could be wrong, but I think aging people are more acceptable disability 
and the whole mm -hmm. than they were years ago. Mm -hmm. Life is changing for yeah, a lot of people. Because everyone does have a disability mm -hmm. as they age. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another one of the good points in acknowledgement yes. is that, you know, the issues are very similar yeah. and joining forces to kind of raise unmet needs and things that we do well or systems change. I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of that because we're starting to cross those boundaries mm -hmm. and, you know, push back on the system yeah. and say, why is it this way? Why do I have to be 60 before I can access some yeah. things, you know? So I think that the momentum is, is, is coming. And with the ADRC side of things, I mean, it's, it's an idea and it's a system change because it's trying to pull everybody together and make it so that if you were to call one place, that one place is going to be able to get you to that yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right thing. Um, so that's kind of the hope of these ADRCs going, you know, statewide is that it's going to cut down confusion, mm -hmm. cut down overwhelmingness. You call one number and you should be able to get some good information, good starting points and start making progress as opposed to getting the ring around the rosy that's been happening before. Yeah, so, sure. um, so I'm optimistic. I've seen really good things of it so far. There's obviously a lot of work that needs to be done. So, but um, I just want the public to know that there is resources out there um, that are working to help you reduce the stress of trying to plan and if you've got loved ones that have special needs or that are aging, that just give us a call and we'll help you work through it. Um, and at this point, there's no fee associated with the ADRC and options counseling. So it may change in the future, but right now it doesn't matter what income bracket you're in, you'd be able to talk with somebody to kind of get some good info. So, yeah. yeah. And it just that fact that getting all of the information in one place. I mean, God, those of us who have dealt with the system for decades now mm -hmm. know how frustrating it is that you want something and you go to one agency and they may or may not deal with that at all or they may deal with some of it and not the other so you get referred to somebody else right. and on and on and on and by the time you get six different agencies telling you what trouble, you right? what you have to do to get assistance from them mm -hmm. and the fact that those six different agencies may all have different eligibility criteria for the same thing and if you get six different people at six different agencies trying to interpret rules, mm -hmm. you got six different interpretations. Right. Right. But, you know, and, and the fact that a few of the things that both the groups have in common mm -hmm. is they want to stay in their own home yep or they want to get out of an institution mm -hmm. and into some place of their own. Right. The fact that it's more economical mm -hmm. to have somebody living in the community. the community getting services as opposed to getting services in some kind of an institution. Right. The craziness with it is you're guaranteed to get services in an institution, right. but you have to have a waiver mm -hmm. to get services in the community. Right. And, you're living, and you're living in your own environment right. increases the longevity of your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, you know, people just are happier that way. Oh, yeah. I agree, I agree. And so, I, like we were talking earlier, there's no magic wand to make the perfect solution happen all the time. But 
we're here to help try and figure out the options. And when you were talking advocacy, that's the other part of bringing the things that aren't working or that need to change mm -hmm. to the people that actually need to make the changes and can ha and have the power to do it. So I think we're, we're trying to all be working closer to being on the same team um, with the same kind of mission and goals, and that's to win and be independent and feel useful and productive lives, right? Yeah. And happy and whatnot. So um, hmm. the other thing we were talking about is the Medicare part. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that people are aware that um, of some cost saving programs that are out there for those that are on Medicare. So that's not just for those that are 65. It's for those that are on disability because those with disability, right, can have yeah, Medicare. Yeah. yeah. And that doesn't mean you automatically get Medicaid, no. right? Yeah. So if you're just straight up Medicare, you can still be pricey. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. So if we can't find a way to get you on Medicaid to provide that secondary insurance, the things you should know about are that um, there's extra help for your prescriptions. And the incomes for about that is about 1400 a month. But you can still have resources of about 13000 So it opens the door for some people through Social Security to get some help with their prescriptions. And then through the state of Iowa, there's a program to help with their premiums. How much do they take out your check every month for, for your Medicare? Do you know? I'm not sure. I think it's nearly 100 Yeah, it's about 104 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for most people, for that, like Part B premium? Yes. Yeah. So through the state of Iowa, um, through the Department of Human Services, there's Medicare savings program that can help um, pay that premium. The income is about 1200 though, so it's still a little um, small. Yeah. Yeah. And 7000 you can have in your, your checking and savings. But if the public out there know people that fit that bill, mm -hmm. You know, all you got to do is call Heritage and we'll get your screens and we can do those applications um, to Social Security and Department of Human Services to make sure you get those benefits because it can save it can save a good amount of money if you're able to get some assistance on it. So yeah. just want to make sure I got a second to plug that. The government likes that, right? Absolutely, they do. <laughs> yep, so. yeah, there was, I was reading an article today uh -huh. about Medicare and Medicare supplemental policies okay and it was in relation to the fact that states are required to have medicare supplementals okay programs okay but you have to be over 65 to be eligible for for the supplemental plans for the medicare yeah so that somebody who's been on Medicare because of disability right. isn't eligible to purchase those supplemental programs. There are a few that are geared towards those with disabilities. And then when you turn 65, you get the guaranteed issue of where you can pick a plan. So mm -hmm. it's not perfect on the supplement side because usually those are pretty pricey. So, yeah. yeah. So the ways that we try to look at other options to get that secondary would be through like the Medicaid for employed persons with disabilities. So that's a mouthful, it's method, it's working as little as babysitting, pet yeah. sitting, all the way up to hold, holding kind of a, what they would consider a normal part-time type of job to mm -hmm. be able to get Medicaid. My question is how much all this Affordable Care Act is going to change that, but I don't know yet. So. I don't know that it's going to change that. And I, I personally think that, that the MAPD program is probably the least known and the least understood program yeah. out there. Yeah. And I talk to people about that because I use that program mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. and tell them what, you know, what, you, know you can earn this amount of money, and you pay a premium mm -hmm. to purchase your Medicaid, da da da, and have them go. No, that's not true. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, it is. No, it. you can't. You can't work, yeah. or you lose it. It's, no, no, you know, there's a way to keep it. No, you <laughs> you don't understand it. Yeah. I use it. I know this, but well. you know. It, 
I think it's scary for people to, it, to think about the idea of losing some benefits. And so they really have to have some really hardcore proof. Yeah, and they do. Not to say convincing, but like, in person, this is what you can do. Here's the literature. Mm -hmm. Here's let's go down there together. And I mean, there are a lot of people we've signed up for it, you know, that are now yeah. getting Medicaid either uh -huh. for free or for a premium. But if you look at the cost, it's definitely a oh, very it's... big. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> worth for... the worth the the money. So. Absolutely. So. But yeah. So if you have questions on that or you. Glimmer, it's, you can give us a call yeah. too. So it's, remember the one-stop shop, you just call yeah. us and we hope to have the answer. And if we don't, we'll let you know we don't and we'll find it out, so. Yeah. And as you said, it allows you to have more resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. An individual who's on straight Medicaid mm -hmm. is limited to $2,000. $2, then you check in and savings, doesn't go very far. How far, how far back does that go? The look back? Or what do you mean? Uh, how far back has 2000 been the limit? Oh, for a long time. As long as I've been in the system, so. Um, the, I don't know how as long far as, you, as, as far as, as you know, $2,000 limit, yeah, yeah it hasn't yeah. changed much. At so. least, it goes back at least as far as 1971. Right, so income goes up briefly, just a tad for guidelines, but the resource limits haven't budged, so. Yeah, for that it hasn't. Yeah. And the logic of that, name one other thing that hasn't risen in the last 42 plus years. I'll have to punt to you guys on that one. You know, well, I mean, <laughs> right. Gas. wages, right. yeah, every, yeah, seeing food hasn't increased, medicine, yeah. everything, everything that we use has increased. increased. Mm -hmm. I think... The first power wheelchair I had back in '72 was maybe 2,500. Mm. As I sit here right now, twenty-six thousand dollars. I was gonna yeah. say you've got all sorts of gadgets and. Oh no, this is really things. kind of plain Jane. Okay. There's a couple features on it, but. What about yours, plain Jane or? Well, it feels. It what? It. It can go back. Though so I guess five years ago it was twenty one five. Okay. And my first one, right Terry, was seventy six. Mm -hmm. And I think it was eighteen hundred. Okay. So exorbitant kind of increase. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, I hear you and that it's kind of one of those things that makes you question why isn't that kind of budging mm -hmm. a little bit. So, but yes, there is a lot of misconceptions about lots of different programs that are out there. And I think it makes people really hesitant to, to pick up that phone and say, I don't really know what's out there for me because in their head there probably isn't anything that would help them. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's kind of the case, you know, of when you start looking for answers and when you start exploring that, so many times it's the case you don't know what you need because right. right. you don't know what's available. Right. And you don't know who offers mm -hmm. something. If you don't know you're going to so, need it. Yeah, yeah, right. you know. Right. So, I mean, our, our hope is that we get more persons thinking proactively to a certain degree as opposed to reactive. Um, and so planning that next step before you might need it. So at least you have some general ideas of how life could go before the train wreck, you know. So yeah. right now we're kind of still on the train wreck of where a life change happens and we've got to solve problems right now. Those are a lot of the people we're working with. Mm -hmm. But ideally, the, the hope of at least the options counseling bit of sitting down and planning is to start having those conversations earlier and earlier so that we have more of an educated base out there that yeah. know the, their rights and their options and can pursue things on their own without having to be dependent on a system to be like, 
hand holding them all the time through it. So, mm -hmm. and then working on change, like if a service wasn't available and they think they're going to need it in the future, to start working towards that goal of how can we make that happen. So, well, I guess you, we'll see. You said the the advanced planning, and you know, parents and a disabled child mm -hmm. are one of the big things that Correct. you know. The parents not always going to be around. So what's going to happen with the child mm -hmm. and to to get with an attorney mm -hmm. or to get with, with you guys and options counseling some right. and plan on how is is the child going to be yeah. taken care of? Yes. Are there siblings in the family who are, the person would go to live with? Right. What about meeting a child's financial needs, mm -hmm. what kind of you know, trusts or right, that need to be set up. things are, right. are set up for that that will actually help right. because there are rules with all that mm -hmm. stuff. And you, know, you just can't save for X amount of time and then open a, a checking or a savings account and in the fine. person's name and you might already have disqualified them right. because income limits. Right. You know, there, there are just so many things out there. So many things. There. But the, the thing, though, Terry, is, is that starting that conversation. We've had many cases in the last several weeks where the exact thing you were talking about have happened, and there's been no plan. And we, ideally, you include your adult child in that conversation, too. But... If there's nothing written, if there's no power of attorney yeah. designated, you know, everybody who wants to help, their hands are tied. Yeah. And so we don't want your loved one to be kind of stranded. So the more you start thinking about that, even though it's so uncomfortable to think, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be here one day. It's the truth and it's going to happen. And so yeah. you've got support to help you work through that and deal with the emotions and, and get things that is a solid, good plan so that when, when the yeah. day comes, you know, yeah. for the most part, it's going to be okay. Sure. So. Yeah, I mean, no matter what you call it, it it's advanced directives. Yeah. You know, don't make people guess what your wishes what are. you want. Yeah. And don't wait until the last minute. Because it's too late at that yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So and that's what we're here to help navigate. So Quit. please call our number. Should I tell them my number? Sure. Okay. You don't have to ask for me, Regina. There's many of us out there. So it's 319-398-5559. It's the Heritage Agency on Aging, Aging and Disability Resource Center. It's a mouthful. So mm -hmm. most people still know us as the Heritage Agency on Aging. So that's how okay. you reach us. So. Well... We've burned through the time for you this right. segment. It goes fast. So thank you. I want to thank you for stopping by and yeah. sharing with everybody all the new stuff that's available to them. And certainly encourage everybody to give a call and see what information you can get. Mm -hmm. And we may have to have you back again some other time yeah. as, as the whole process Evolves. Sounds great. I would love the opportunity. But so. Thank you. Until then, Good night. thanks everybody out there. See you next time.